Hey family, this is Kathy. Welcome back to the Salt and Light channel. I have another word for you from the Lord. And the title of this message is, Jesus Still Has His Scars Too. Jesus wants you to know that He still has His scars too. And this is to encourage you because sometimes in your mind you'll say, or you'll feel, um, you know, I've been through this. And you look at, you know, scars you may have in your body, your mind, your health, your soul, um, your finances, just any area of your life. But Jesus wants you to know and remind you that he still has his scars too, even in heaven. But now the glory of God shines through them. The glory of God shines through the scars and the broken places. And that's how the glory of God shines through us. It's a, another example he's bringing to me is when Mary broke the alabaster box and anointed him with oil. Well, the anointing is going to cost, but when it, we're broken and when we're humbled or humble ourselves, uh, the song that I shared last night on the channel as well as be encouraged on Facebook was, <clears throat> this is where the healing begins. And if you look and listen to the words of it, it says, um, when you come to where you're broken within, the light meets the dark. Well, the brokenness is where the light of Christ gets into the dark. And the Bible says light dispels the darkness. So even though you're hurting or it may, it may be painful, the light of the Lord is shining through you and through your scars. And it's going to shine to other people in the dark. <clears throat> so this was after Mary had went to the tomb. And um, she was crying. And all of a sudden... Jesus appeared to her after the two angels. They were sitting at each end of where his body was. And Jesus appeared to her and, you know, he said, Mary, she, she turned to him and said, Rabbi, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I'm ascending to my father and your father and to my God and to your God. But he didn't do it until 40 days later. So he spent time with them after his um, resurrection. Um, verse 19, Then the same day at evening, be, being, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said, to this, said this, he showed them his hands and, and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Well, Jesus knew that was the only way he was going to have to prove himself. I mean, he could have done anything, but the Lord shows uh, himself to us through his own scars, his own pain. He's, he says in his word, you do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of your infirmities. He knows and he's touched by our infirmities because he felt them when he was on the earth. So to prove his word and himself, he said, look at my hands, look at my sides. And the scars were still there, and they're still there now in heaven. Um, that right there is just beautiful to me. Um, he said, peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad they saw the Lord because, you know, they were the first ones to walk with Christ, and they, they only knew their teaching and their walk with him. But after he died, you know, they were devastated. And it's just like we're devastated when we lose someone we love. But Jesus came back and appeared to them to show them, hey, it's me, but to show them also he had conquered death. He had conquered sin in the grave. He had conquered uh, sickness and disease and depression, everything. Um, so Jesus said to them again, Peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. That's how they were the first ones to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And then when they were all assembled together in Acts 1 and 2, <clears throat> God sent them uh, the Holy Ghost to them. Because they were all in one accord, they were in unity, and they had repented of their sins, and they wanted the Lord, and the disciples were already preaching about Jesus. So remember, these were people who first experienced everything before they understood. And he's so merciful, just like he's merciful to us. He says, I know your frames. I remember your dust, that you're weak sometimes, and you don't understand. <clears throat> So he sends us, like Matthew 28 says, 
Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whew. He gave it to them first. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And basically, if you hold unforgiveness or you hold a grudge. So it's always good to release and forgive and say, Lord, I forgive them. I release any anger or bitterness because that keeps you at peace and healthier too. And then the Lord can move for you. Now, when Thomas called, Tom, now when Thomas called the twin, one of the 12 was not with them when Jesus came. So he didn't see him when they did. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. <clears throat> So he said to them, unless I see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Well, he wasn't with them, but again, he, he didn't believe at first. But, and if you notice before, Jesus told Mary, don't, you know, don't embrace me, don't hug me. I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But this is how merciful he is. After they said, we've seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see his hands in the print of the nails and put my finger into his hands inside, I will not believe. How many of us are like that? We won't believe it until we see it. I pray, but Lord, I'm not really going to believe it until I see it. That's not faith. That's still doubt. But the Lord, a lot of times, will just show you that, you know, my word is true and I, I meant what I said. So we got to stop being what they call doubting Thomases. And, you know, I, I understand to an extent Thomas wasn't there, but at the same time, would his friends lie to him? You know, when I come on this uh, channel to bring a word from the Lord, I take time to study and pray and hear from him, just like many others do. And I've had people I've given words to that they didn't believe. But when it came to pass, they came back to me and said, Kathy, you were right. I said, no, God is always right. So when you get something from the Lord and it goes into your heart and it bears witness, you receive it. Just like right now, just say, Lord, I believe. And if you're having trouble with doubt, especially when you've been through a long struggle, sometimes doubt kicks in. You just say, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Because... He's faithful and true, and he's going to come through for you. And trust me, I know. I, I have stood and waited for things for a long time. There's things I'm still standing for now, but I know he's going to do it. Um, I've just seen, God said this was the week of breakthrough. I've already seen one of the things I've been praying for come to pass. So it's about growing your faith, and do you really trust him? Um. So after eight days, verse 26, his disciples were again inside. And they were inside with the door locked because of fear of the Jews. You know, they're going in there turning everything upside down, topsy-turvy, because that's what Jesus did. He came in to change the way people thought and to change the world because originally it wasn't like that in the Garden of Eden. So he came to restore. You know, he calls us repairs of the breach to live in. He does it through us. So after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst or the middle of them and said, Peace be to you. He is saying, Peace be to you right now. He's saying, Peace be to me. He's always said peace. Even whenever the angels appeared to Joseph and Mary and so many people in the Bible, the first thing they said, Peace be unto you. What is it? Uh, goodwill peace toward men so peace is his um peace is your portion <laughs> then he said to thomas reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it in my side do not be unbelieving but believing so first he told mary not to you know touch him because he had ascended to the father but then he came in and let thomas put his hands in his fingers and his sides and how did he know what Thomas said? Now, the disciples could have told him, but Jesus had appeared to them, and he wasn't always with them constantly. He knew by the Spirit, Father told him, Heavenly Father, and he probably said, go ahead and let him. I'm not speaking for him, but this is just what I'm discerning. 
He loved him enough to show him the truth. And God's loving you enough to show you the truth in your life and what's causing pain. Sometimes it's the doctor telling you, you need to cut back on sugar. You need to start exercising. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, your accountant telling you, you need to cut back on your expenses. Whatever the Lord wants to do to bring healing to your life. He's first saying, peace be still. But he's also saying, he gives you direction and he gives you enough love and wisdom to go forward. So many of you, he's spoken to you and told you what to do and you haven't done it yet, either out of fear, uh, pride, stubbornness, or maybe you're just not sure if that was him. Well, he sent me to tell you it was me and I still have my scars too. So I am with you in your pain. You know, that's why one of his names is Emmanuel. God with us and he feels what you feel um, so after Jesus told Thomas to put your hands in my thing you put your fingers and hands in my in my fingers and my side well you know what I mean then Thomas said my Lord my God how many of us when we get a revelation from the Lord or the truth or the answer comes we're like thank you Lord my God but did you believe it before it manifested or before he did it for you? That's what really faith is. That's what it is going back to the woman with the issue of blood. She believed before she received. She just said, if I could touch the hem of his garment. You know, God has had me in a season of uh, pumping up people's faith and building their faith. Because you're going to need it. Everybody needs faith. Now, he's given us the measure of faith, but it has to grow. You have to get off the milk and onto the meat of the word and okay thank you Lord and he said and stop blaming other people for situations in your life when you haven't made changes that he's told you to do so Thomas said my Lord my God Jesus said to him Thomas because you have seen me you have believed blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed maybe you haven't seen the breakthrough right now maybe you haven't um, gotten the marriage proposal maybe your marriage hasn't been restored maybe your car is broke down right now and you're praying for God to help you and you might not have seen it yet God is waiting on you to believe before you receive you know all you know he said whatever you ask in my name John 14 14 that's what Jesus said whatever you ask the Father in my name I will do it so this is where the Lord is saying do you believe before you see it so um, and that's what he taught me, uh, started teaching me years ago was, Kathy, believe me, no matter what people say to you, no matter who doubts me, no matter who tries to negate the word I gave you. Because I've had people come to me and say, oh, that wasn't the Lord, that wasn't Jesus. Yes, it was. You know when it's God speaking to you. I know when he's speaking to me, and I know when it's the voice of the enemy. Now, occasionally there's been a little bit of misconstrued, so what I do is I get still and I wait. And I say, Lord, clear out all the voices that are not of you and confirm what I need. Because you said in your word through the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. You can ask him that. Say, Lord, I need confirmation. That's why, you know, we take words to the Lord for confirmation. When I get a word or when I get an offer somewhere, I'll, I'll go to the Lord and say, God, is this you? If it's not, take it away. Um, even in my past, I've applied for jobs that were just snatched right out of my hands. And I knew that was God. Um, the ones he had for me to do fell in my lap and they were offered to me. So is that always going to be the same case for everyone? No, but that's how he appears to me. <clears throat> but he wants me to tell you to trust him first before you see it. Because he still has his scars too. And he understands you and he... He hurts with you, but he also has healing for you. So turn it over to him. Forgive people. Let things go. Um, <clears throat> this is what he said to me last night when I was writing this. You may still have mental or physical scars, burns, incisions, surgery scars, trauma from accidents. You may have prosthetics, dentures, implants, colostomy bags, oxygen tanks, CPAPs, etc. But Jesus still has his scars too. He overcame all this, but he still is showing us, I'm with you, I'm Emmanuel. 
We live in a fallen world, not the Garden of Eden, but a new heaven and a new earth is coming one day. Read, read Revelation 21. And this is where it explains the 12 gates of heaven are made from one pearl, and they are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There are 12 foundations of the walls of heaven, and each foundation is an amazing, beautiful gemstone, and those are named for the 12 um, apostles or the 12 disciples because they started out with Jesus in faith on his journey to, to save and change the world. What an amazing gift, but we are the ones that are finishing it, and then one day we're all going to be together at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and that's why he's waiting to have wine with us. We go through that, you know, which is the heavenly wine. And he's waiting to drink that with us when we're together at the banquet. Okay. He says, you may think you're ugly because you're older or you use Botox, facelifts, etc., but you shine with the beauty and the glory of God. And what he meant by that is you don't have to do all that. If you want to do it, okay, that's fine. But there's, I'm sensing there's some people that feel they're not beautiful anymore or they have to do that to keep their husband when when someone or something is given to you by God no man can take it away you know my late husband was was with me f and we were married for a long time but it was God who took him because he God gave him to me so what God gives to you or who he gives to you only the Lord can take it and when he does there's a reason for it and I, I went through a time of I didn't understand I didn't understand but he's he's taught me even, and it was already prophesied to me, but he's taught me through the years what his purpose is in everything. And part of it was to help me get started the worldwide ministry. And he was the one of the original founders of this ministry, and he will always have the honor and the respect for that. There's people in your life that you still honor and respect for helping you, so that's okay. But I give the glory all to the Lord first and foremost, for what he's done in my life and who he has sent to help me or to bless me or to pray for me. And you are some of those people, so I give him thanks for you too. And I pray blessings and healing on you. I hear the Lord Jesus saying, peace be still. Yes, I see them. Yes, I see your pain and scars. I see everyone's pain and scars that you don't see. Many are since childhood. I'm going in and healing those childhood scars. I'm healing all wounds and scars. I got emotional right in this. I'm making all things new. <clears throat> if it overwhelms you, look at my hands, look at my feet, look at my side. They're, they're broken, but the glory is shining through like the glory is shining through you. So, he did give me a song to go with this video, but I never um, end a video without giving uh, the viewers a chance to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life and accept him into your heart and life and to walk with him like the disciples did. Romans 10, 9 through 13 says, If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You'll be a disciple of Christ. For with the heart, man or woman believes to salvation. you got to believe it first before you see it. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And what he's saying to me right now is many of you have been, have been an atheist or you don't believe in God or you've been hurt so bad and abused so bad and you didn't think that God was there with you. He was. He spared your life. And you're sitting in front of this video right now hearing this word and this last call of salvation because you haven't seen any love. You haven't seen compassion, and he knows that. But right now, his love and his compassion is flowing through me, through this screen to you, and I, I know you feel it. And I pray he engulfs you right now with his love and his mercy and embraces you like never before. So if you're watching this and you're ready to Give the Lord a chance and have faith before you see him, just like the disciples did. They had to have faith as that he was who he said he was. Trust me, he's who he says he is and more, because I've walked with him since I was 12. I want you to pray this prayer after me to come to Christ and be a part of the family of God and kingdom of heaven. 
And his anointing and his love and mercy is just flowing right now to you. Yes, Lord, let it break all the binds. Let it break all the strongholds. Let it break down the demonic lies and entities that surround these people. And I, I pray, claim them for you. And I snatch them out of the pit of hell in Jesus' name. All right, pray this prayer after me if you want to walk with Christ and have an, a life of peace and healing. Yes, you'll have trials and tribulations, but we, we have a way out. Whereas the people that don't know him don't have a way out until you tell them. So pray this. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I repent of doubting you and, and having an unbelieving heart, which you call a wicked heart forgive me come in my heart my life and save me and wash me in your blood I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the son of God I believe you died on the cross for my sins shed your blood for me and God raised you from the dead Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit and baptize me in your fire. Cleanse me, deliver me, and set me free. There it goes. I surrender my life and will to you in exchange for yours. I am saved. Thank you, Lord. It's that simple. And you are now, those of you that prayed it, and you believe in your heart, you are a child of God. The Bible says, first in Luke 15, the angels in heaven are having a party. They're throwing a party. They're celebrating over you. And your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And you have been translated according to Colossians 1.13 from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Your next step is to get water baptized. That's where you show everybody, I got the wedding band, I'm married to Jesus. When you go down into the water, you go down the old person, the dead person, you come up a new creation. Cleansed, healed, restored. And it's a process too, it's a daily process. But there's healing and deliverance in the baptism. Because Jesus was baptized. So we gotta follow his example. So I pray the Lord leads you where to go, whether it's a pool, a community baptism at the beach, the lake, the river, somebody's bathtub, the Lord will let you know where you're supposed to go. And what he's telling me again, you know how I said I will honor the man who helped me start this ministry. He's now in the presence of God. Today's his birthday. So happy heavenly birthday, Jeff. And thank you for helping me birth this ministry that these beautiful people are a part of now. Um... I want to thank every every subscriber, every channel member. If you want to subscribe and receive these videos, just hit the bell icon, and that'll turn on the notifications. We have a live stream tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. We do them every Tuesday and Friday at 7.30. Between 7.30, 7.45 is when we get started. And I do pop-up live streams, too, when the Holy Spirit tells me. So uh, if you would like to be a channel member, which is where you you feel led to sow monthly into the ministry and get underneath this covering and this anointing and you want strongholds broken off your life, you want healing in your lives and your families, and you um, you want to see a change in your life. The channel memberships, if you look at, over near like the community section, you'll see pictures of channel members in like circles. It says thank you members. Well, to the right is the join button. And uh, I've had people tell me they've had trouble joining, so if you are, let me know. You can email me at sl5373 at yahoo.com and let me know and I'll help you. So thank you to every subscriber, every channel member. Um, thank you to my moderators who were uh, warriors and workers in the trenches with me. And they're uh, praying over the channel just like you are, but they help watch for um, unclean spirits trying to get in and demonic attacks and crude and rude remarks because children do watch the, this channel too and they actually come on the live streams 
So I want to thank all of you for your giving. If you feel led to sow a seed into this ministry to receive a breakthrough or for a scripture that you're standing on, um, it, the ways to give are in the description of the video. Just look for the word more and click down and you'll see description. So I pray God blesses all of you and the uh, and those that have sewn into Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal, and super thanks. I pray a thousandfold return for you in the name of Jesus. And thank you to all of you who pray for me, who um, comment, like, share. Everything is all part of the mission here. And we are constantly getting souls saved. That, that's my main goal here, and to see people have breakthrough. So if you prayed the salvation prayer for the first time, or you recommitted your life to the Lord, I want you to put a three in the comments. So we can celebrate you, and I'll reach out to you. Because heaven's already shouting and throwing a party over you. And if this video is for you, or you come into agreement, or it bears witness with you, I want you to put the word scars in the comments, or scar, it doesn't matter. Um, and I will, I will touch an agreement with you, as well as all of the other subscribers, because Jesus said, um, if any two of you touch and agree on anything in earth, it will be done for them and my Father in heaven. So the power of agreement is very, um, very uh, substantial, just like praying in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to give you the song real quick. And I know this is a longer video, but I'm, I'm like preaching a sermon here to you. So I want to see you have the fullness of God in your life. And if you're watching this by replay, you can still pray the sinner's prayer. You can um, comment in the sec live section, and you can also be on the live stream tomorrow. So, the title of this message, or the song, I'm just so excited about the threes in this word. <laughs> Let me pull it up. The lyrics. Okay, it's called Drops in the Ocean by Hawk Nelson. H-A-W-K, just like the hawk. Um, let me find the lyrics. Drops in the Ocean. And it's an amazing song, but there is a story about the lead singer of this band. I had heard he had stepped down and walked away and said he didn't believe in God anymore. So I think his name is John, but if it's true, I ask you to pray for him. Because how can the Lord not minister through music through this guy? So I, th I usually think something's happened when people do that. So we call him back to the throne and to the altar of Jesus Christ. But I love this song. It's called Drops in the Ocean. It says, I want you as you are, not as you ought to be. He'll take you right where you're at. Won't you lay down your guard and come to me? The shame that grips you now is crippling. And some of you are dealing with shame. I've dealt with that in my past. We all have, and I break it off of you in Jesus' name. It breaks my heart to see you suffering. Because I am for you. I'm not against you. If you want to know how far my love can go, just how deep, just how wide. If you want to see how much you mean to me, look at my hands, look at my sides. If you could count the times, I'd say you are forgiven. It's more than the drops in the ocean. The Lord has forgiven you. Forgive yourself. Don't think you need to settle for a substitute when I'm the only love that changes you. And I am for you. I'm not against you. I am for you. I'm not against you. If you want to know how far my love can go, just how deep, just how wide. If you want to see how much you mean to me, look at my hands, look at my sides. This is Jesus saying this to you. If you could count the times I'd say you are forgiven, it's more than the drops in the ocean. Open your heart. It's time that we start again. Those of you that have been away from God, pray that sinner's prayer and let me know. Open your heart, it's time that we start again. Open your heart, it's time that we start again. If you want to know how far my love can go, just how deep, just how wide. If you want to see how much you mean to me, look at my hands, look at my sides. 
if you could count the times, I'd say you are forgiven. It's more than the drops in the ocean. And then the outro is, I am for you. I'm not against you. And he says that over and over. So that's Drops in the Ocean by Hawk Nelson. So I want to uh, thank everyone for, again, all you do to support this ministry. I'll see you in the next video and on tomorrow night's li live stream. And just know that I'm always praying for you. I hear you. I see you. God hears you and sees you. But his timing is perfect. So just know that. If th and those of you that are suffering through a broken marriage or a separation or you're suffering in your body or your mind or your finances right now, I see people have gotten letters in the mail and bad reports, but we're going to stand on Isaiah 53 and we're going to believe the report of the Lord for you. So I love you all and I will talk to you soon.